As chair of the uh, uh, Virginia Chamber, it is a great honor to welcome our Virginia congressional delegation and a group of such uh, distinguished business leaders uh, throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, we thank our elected officials and staff who have taken the time to be with us in this um, truly historic setting. Uh, we value your service and your uh, representation of Virginians. Um, the leadership roles that you play in Washington and the influence you exert in shaping national policy. As we come together today, we all recognize that these are pretty extraordinary times. Um, I suspect that it's, this is very rare that the annual Chamber Congressional Luncheon would occur at a time in the midst of so many issues um, that could dramatically impact Virginia businesses and our economic health. While the federal government has passed sweeping public policy reforms in health care, financial services, and tax policies, these policy changes certainly based on a recent small business survey, have generated a high level of, of uncertainty um, in the business community. In addition, the debate and the circumstances about our federal budget and the effect that a $1.2 trillion dollar, <coughs> excuse me, budget uh, reduction would have upon our defense industry and the technology community in Virginia have also generated a high level of apprehension with Virginia businesses. Unfortunately, um, as you know, un the uncertainty with regard to government policies causes <coughs> business to exercise more caution than usual, <coughs> excuse me, with, with respect to their plans to expand uh, and to grow. And that in turn, of course, stifles uh, job creation and economic growth. Our <coughs> message this year on behalf of the Virginia Chamber is a very simple one. We ask our congressional uh, delegation to work across party lines, work together, and to work with the business community to address our nation's serious economic and financial challenges. We want <coughs> the House and Senate members and their leadership that we are so proud to have among those leaders prominent Virginians that will forge compromises, thank you, that will forge compromises that will result in long-term solutions for the good of our country. <coughs> compromise between political parties and collaboration between business and government have been hallmarked in Virginia for decades on the state and local level. We believe that applying that Virginia tradition <coughs> is just another contribution that Virginia <coughs> and its officials can offer the nation. In that spirit, <coughs> I would like to offer just a, a few comments on issues that we think will help foster growth, innovation, productivity, and job creation in Virginia and elsewhere. First, health care. Rising health care 
Uh, certainly, the rising health care costs are certainly one of the biggest challenges businesses in Virginia and elsewhere face. The high cost of health care is a disincentive for hiring employees and for investing in technologies and facilities. The solution to the rising cost of health care, we all know, is indeed complex. But we believe it lies in pursuing public policies that help companies continue their flexible, generous uh, health benefit package to employees, while also addressing the factors that influence health care costs, that encourage companies to invest in wellness and prevention programs, and that don't impose arbitrary regulatory burdens. Second, energy. Energy for a dynamic, growing economy with adequate energy supplies is absolutely essential. High energy costs impact businesses' bottom lines. We need a national energy policy that increases the supply of reliable energy using a diverse mixture <clears throat> of resources of uh, coal, oil, uh, natural gas, and nuclear, while at the same time applying those sources in an environmentally safe uh, and sound manner, and coupled with conservation and the reliance on renewable energy uh, sources as well. Third, regulations. <clears throat> we must take <clears throat> a hard look at what we do in Washington to remove some of the regulatory burdens that stand in the way of entrepreneurs and investors that create jobs. We need fiscally responsible, pro-growth, pro-jobs, uh, tax reform, to help U.S. companies uh, to compete in the global arena while at the same time <clears throat> maintaining their operations in the U.S. In a globally competitive marketplace, American companies need a regulatory system that promotes sensible oversight and enforcement and removes un unnecessary impediments to economic growth. Finally, Transportation reauthorization. We can't think of a better way <clears throat> to get Virginians back to work than by a federal government that adopts a multi-modal transportation plan that provides reliable, <clears throat> long-term, sustainable revenues that restore and upgrade our aging uh, infrastructure and addresses the needs of business for mobility, to access their customers, and for congestion relief in our major highway and freight corridors. These are indeed difficult times that confront our elected officials. We recognize that. The difficult times for our businesses and for, and for Virginia and our country's economic prosperity. For that reason, we, we look to you, our elected officials, to come together, work together, uh, House and Senate, and to collaborate in that traditional way with business so that we can achieve the economic prosperity um, and that our economy uh, can once again thrive. Again, we thank our Virginia congressional delegation uh, for your service uh, to the Commonwealth. On behalf of the business community, we're very appreciative of the work we do, work that you do with us, and we hope that you enjoy your lunch. Thank you.